When you're creating e-learning scenarios and stories, you're usually choosing your backgrounds and your characters separately, but it can be frustrating when you have a background you drop a character on and it looks weird when the character isn't behind the background objects. I'm going to show you how simple it is to take those characters and layer them behind the background objects. Let's go ahead and do it. You can grab the free link to these files in the show notes to follow along, but if I were in the e-learning art library, first I'd grab the classroom image from our background collection, then I grab the teacher from our business collection, find the character that I want, then grab the pose that I need. This sad seated pose looks good, so I'll download it as an SVG. Here I am in PowerPoint and I have the three different images in here. I have my teacher character, my student character, which I created in another tutorial, and I'll provide a link to that as well, and the background image as well. And you'll see I have the selection pane open, which is going to make things a lot easier in terms of layering. The frustrating thing right now is that I can't drop the characters behind the background objects. The, the background is just one single image that I can't layer. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to try to make the background editable. And so I'm going to go ahead and just hide the teacher and the, and the student um, and work with the background. So now I'm going to unlock the power of the SVG and I'm going to go group, ungroup, and say yes. Sometimes you'll see, um, I have all the different shapes that make up the objects and you know I can hide looks like that group of desks is all together. If I wanted individual desks I could ungroup it further, but for what I'm trying to do I think this is the level that I want to be at, so I'm going to stop the ungrouping process. Um, I want to focus in and simplify the scene. I could layer the characters behind these desks or this desk, um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is just delete that. And now I'm going to grab this whole section. I'm going to group it. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag it down. And you'll see this is my preview window. So I'll let me hold shift and do that again. So I think that's roughly the scene that I would like is right there. Um, and so I'm going to simplify this a little bit further. I'm going to ungroup things one more time. So control shift G, I'm going to delete this. And if I were to bring our characters back in here, you can kind of get a sense for where they're at. So um, we have this desk. So this is actually going to be, let's just see if that's just the desk. Yep. So this is the desk and I'll rename that desk. And then it looks like the rest is this, a bunch of different background elements. So I'm going to hide the desk and the characters and I'll go ahead and make this one group by control G, so that's group, and that will make life easier to work with. So I'll just say background, and now I'm down to these four elements in the selection pane. I've got my teacher, my student, the desk, and the full background. So uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you'll be able to see this a little better. And now if I want to drop the, the teacher behind the desk, um, I could just drag her here or use the arrow keys and she's now behind it. Now this desk of course has the other chair behind it, so I'm going to ungroup that once, click into that chair, do delete, and now I could bring that teacher there. Now I'm noticing something here. It looks like the shadow is actually on top of the teacher's legs and that's a little bit annoying. So we're going to go find that shape Let's move the student here, and this is the shadow. So I am going to want to take that shadow, and actually the teacher should be now above the shadow. There, that fixed that issue right there. Um, now I'm going to position the kid, and remember, we're off the screen here. This is our actual scene, so that's actually looking really good. So I had contr full control um, of the, the layering there by doing that. And I can do it with any different objects. I find it helpful to, to name them. And so I can move them around, um, at that level. In my other tutorials, I've shown you how you can save out an individual character, but if you have a finished scene and you want to bring that into another program, what I would do here, I would probably, well, I don't even need to group them. So I'll just zoom in. We actually have them grouped pretty well, but I can just go file. And here's a little trick. I go to save as, I browse into the, usually I'll put it in the same folder I was in, and then I will say save it as either a PNG is good. There's also the SVG since we're dealing with the vector files, and I could call this uh, final scene teacher student, and I'll click save. 
And I'm going to just do this one, although you can do all slides at once, which is pretty helpful if you're building a larger program. Um, now, if I zoom out, um, or actually I don't even need to, I'll just hide everything here, get us down to nothing. And if I went to that same folder that I had, I could do final scene teacher student, and you'll see it's a flat file that I could then ungroup. I could also bring it into Storyline or Captivate or whatever other program I wanted to bring it into. To build your e-learning graphics skills, sign up for our free mini course and subscribe to our channel to get more content like this.